<laughs> good morning, good afternoon, good evening, one and all. That was a raucous version of old Joe Clark to start off my morning. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of got away from me, but it's fun to get, get sloppy and fast sometimes. It's fun down the octave, too. All right. Welcome to Mando Lessons Live. My name is Baron Collins Hill. Great to have you here with us. We got a bunch of folks in the chat already. Let us know where you're tuning in from if you so choose. Uh, let us know if this is your first time. Always love to see new names and faces pop up. We've got Joe, C Drive, Neil, Betsy, Dan, Shane, Lindsay, Sherry, David, Joan, Fi Forum. Peter, Paul, another Paul, another Peter, wow, no, same Peter, <laughs> uh, Sheldon, Jim, Claire, Ursinos, amazing, all right, let's see, so, the way these work is, if you haven't been here before, uh, it's just an hour of Q&A, so if you've got questions, Put them in the chat. I'll do my best to answer them. I love hearing what everybody's working on, what your favorite tune of the moment is. If you want me to play a tune, I'm happy to try to remember how they go. And yeah, just generally have fun with it. Oh, yeah. Neil says, this week I learned about the David Surrett Mandolin Festival, Mando Fest, first weekend in May, Concord, New Hampshire. Yes. Formerly, well, maybe it will again be the March Mando Festival or March Mandolin Weekend. Um... Started by the late, great David Surrett, a good friend of mine. And I taught there a couple times. Hopefully we'll teach there again someday. Once or twice in person, and then once during the pandemic. I did a live one. Super fun. If you are in New England or are willing to go to New England for that festival, it's amazing. It's so much fun. Uh, yeah, you can look that up. Uh, David Surrett, Mandolin Festival, New Hampshire. The old Google is your friend there. It'll take you to the right spot. Uh, one of my favorite <coughs> experiences of all time. Just a bunch of mandolin enthusiasts hanging out for a weekend. Doesn't get any better than that. Shane says, got my coffee, got my Mando. What else do I need? <laughs> I wish I had some coffee. I didn't kind of ran out of time this morning. Well, I drank one cup, but that was four hours ago um could use another maybe not after that uh old joe clark hello from bc california vancouver island etc essex old england love it <laughs> there's a great there's a song that may end up on a future recording called old new england that i really love um <laughs> the old new Awesome. First timer from Peter Rahill. Rahill. Apologies, I'm probably not saying your last name correctly. Got your mando ready to go. That's what I love to hear. Yeah, I hope you all got your mandolins out and tuned up and are just playing along. Uh, Paul says, you got to tell me how to do a premiere without the YouTube music. I don't really know what that means. I never do. Oh, oh, I know what you mean. Like, how to make it not go... Dum, dum, da, da, dum, like, have that... I don't, I don't know. I would love to know. I think maybe once, yeah, there may be a way to do it, put in custom countdown music now. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe somebody else in the chat knows. You know, if you do a premiere, you get that sort of cheesy countdown music. Somebody actually, I, I was, geez, this is getting off topic already, uh, just the way I like it. Uh, I teach, as many of you know, at Maine Fiddle Camp. I won't be there this year. Um, but all eyes set for 2024. But over the pandemic, we would do a lot of online stuff with Maine Fiddle Camp. And we all we did a lot of premieres. And somebody took the tune, what was it? Was it Spotted Pony, I think? And made a version of the tune Spotted Pony in the style of the YouTube countdown music. <laughs> and I wish we could, there was some way to plug that in. But it was like really kind of electronic, trancey music. And it was going... Dun, da, da, dun, da, da, dun. a lot of like electronic drums and like smooth it was very fun 
Old Joe Clark, that was the tune that I started off with. That's the tune we'll play at the end of the hour. Ooh, any Sandy Springs, Georgia session players in the house? If anybody knows, if maybe that's a particular session that Peter's seeing if there's anybody else here, or maybe looking for more people to start a session in the area. Ersana says, lost the first five minutes. No, you didn't. You just got here in time. I've only been going for... I don't know. Well, you didn't miss anything, regardless. The first three are always the countdown, anyway. Baron is well caffeinated. Maybe he wishes he had a little more caffeine, though. All right. We got all sorts of new names. Love it. Claire says, first time, been trying to contact you for a while, but can't get the email to work. Okay. Uh, the actual address of your mail so I can write to you. Um, I'm not going to do that on the YouTube live, but my email address should work. It's mandolessons at mandolessons.com. I've been getting emails through. Um, or if you search my name on the internet, you can find other email addresses that will get through to me. Um, Union Made, great tune. That's one of my favorites, also known as Red Wing. Ooh, Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, once I catch up with the chat, I'll play a little spicy union made for Mando Play and Lan. I'm probably not saying that correct. I'll just call you Mando Play. Uh, first time from Cindy. Awesome. Welcome. Thanks so much for joining us. Working on Banish Misfortune. Mental block with A, B, and C tunes in 6 8. Ah, uh, just rep any suggestions. I would say, you know, just repetition, listen to the tune a lot, just getting used to, like, you know, the... That one always... That's a really noty tune. That one kind of throws me for a loop, too. Um, it's a very... It's, that tune's got a lot going on, so it's a lot to, to get under your fingers and into your brain. But just listen to it a bunch. You can make yourself flashcards, or just, like, what's the third part? And I can't even do that. I, but, you know, see if you can start with the different parts. Just to sort of get those solidified. Bluegrass Stomp. Great tune. Um, hey, awesome. Ray Hill, awesome. Peter says, got my satin finished Delore A style. Love those Delores. Got one in the corner there. Uh, and Ray Hill, thanks for the pronunciation. All right. Um, what was that? Uh, yeah, so if people have questions about playing music, mandolins, all that sort of stuff. Put them out there while I play a little bit of this Union Made Red Wing uh, in a spicy style by request. Alright, let's see.
<laughs> okay. Whoa, that was a challenge to try to do something with that one. Um, I'm also wicked out of tune now. Whew, there's a little bit of spicy red wing. Oh, we got Shannon Heaton and or Matt Heaton in the house. Oh, it's definitely Shannon because she's talking about playing the box. Pick a tune, Shannon. Let's play. What's the tune you're working on on the box that I might know? I'll, I'll play it along with you. Nice, non-spicy tempo. So, for those of you who don't know, I'm out of tune. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Shannon and Matt Heaton, who just dropped into the chat, have an awesome bi-monthly, once every two weeks, I think first and third Saturdays of the month, right after my live stream, they host a guided Irish session that's amazing. Um, anytime I can, I try to catch it and try to play along on mandolin or tenor banjo or box or bazooki. It's, it's really a very fun tune. Um, ooh, red-haired boy. In G. Ooh, I've never thought about it in G. How does that go? What would that be? Alright, let's do it in G. That's fun. So here's a little challenge. This tune is played in bluegrass circles in, um, in the key of A. Red-haired boy. It sounds like this. Shannon says she plays it in G. Uh, yes, also Little Beggar Man is a, a very, yeah, another name for it. Um, so, so let's try it out in G. That's a fun exercise to do. Try tunes in different keys. Sometimes people know them in different keys, so it's good to work on that skill. The, the hardest thing for me changing keys is usually getting those first couple notes. And if you're, if you've played enough in, you know, a bunch of the classic keys, like, G and D and A, and somebody's maybe playing a D tune in A or a G tune in A. Um, often our muscle memory will take over after a while, but it, for me it's always just like really having to think about how the tune starts in that new key. And then our experience with those scales and with playing a bunch of tunes in those keys, they all start coming out um, almost by magic once you uh, sort of practice that idea of playing tunes you already know in different keys. So it's a really great thing to do. So let's try it, not too fast, um, because probably a lot of people are gonna be playing this in G for the first time, I think including myself. So let's find out. Uh, so how does it start? So I'm gonna take that down. Cool, I like it. All right, so not too fast. Harmony Peter. Love it. One more.
<laughs> there we go, a little red-haired boy, aka Little Beggar Man, in G. So maybe that's a good little piece of uh, homework for people, is uh, if, if that was kind of going by too fast for you, see if you can take that tune, or any tune, I guess. Like, take, what's your favorite tune of the moment? See if you can change the key. Sometimes it's going to work on the instrument, like that worked nicely. Uh, sometimes you're going to run out of notes going lower or higher or have to go way up. Um, but it just sort of takes some experimentation. And the more you have that idea of could this happen in a different key in your head, you start to realize like, oh yeah, this, this would work going up a little bit or down a little bit or just changing strings. Like if you're playing a tune and it only uses the D, A, and E strings, then you could change it, you could change the key, let's say it's in D on the D, A, and E strings, you could change it to the key of G and it would all be on the G, D, and A strings. That's another thing I keep in mind with playing tunes down an octave. If I'm playing through a tune and I notice that it doesn't go below this fifth fret on the D string, which is a G. Whoops. <laughs> fifth fret on the D string is a G. Let's try that again. Uh, then it means you can play that whole tune down an octave because it's not going to go lower than your low open G. Nice. Yeah, so uh, Neil says Little Beggar Man is on the session in G. It, it's probably, it's a tune that sort of is... I think maybe, yeah, it's multiple names, uh, and I know it's probably more common to be in G in Irish. G is a much more common key than A major in Irish music, um, but in bluegrass and old-time music, that tune definitely usually gets played in A. And it is, it is interesting, though, actually, because I think, like, so it's actually an A mixolydian, uh, Well, actually, it's, it, it has parts in... Let me see. Oh yeah, it is all mixed. Yeah, so the, all the G sharps, in the key of A, all the G sharps are G naturals, making it A mixolydian, which makes it a little more Irish friendly. Um, a lot of traditional Irish instruments have trouble with that G sharp. It's not as natural of a note to hit. Um, but by playing it in G, you're also going into kind of unnatural note territory with that F natural. So uh, a little of both. And maybe Shannon can speak a little more to that. Uh, where was I here? Ooh, G and then A. That's also a fun thing to do. Uh. A little modulation. That's... But yeah, also very fun. There's a great, what record is that? I'm going to look it up. There's a great record of Norman Blake doing uh, Little Beggar Man into Gilderoy. Oh, so it's, it's Norman, uh, if you don't, if no one's, if someone, <laughs> if anyone is not familiar with this record, uh, Norman Blake and Tony Rice made a couple records, but their first one has an awesome version of Little Beggar Man into this tune Gilderoy. Which I don't know if it's traditional or if maybe Norman wrote it, but it's kind of like a minor version of Red Haired Boy or Little Beggar Man. It's very cool. Um, check that out if you haven't. That whole album, everything Norman Blake does is amazing. Um, and Tony Rice and the, the Blake and Rice records are just top notch. So check those out if you haven't. And check out that version of Little Beggar Man into Gilderoy. Anyone have a suggestion where I could get an octave mandolin or mandola for a beginner? So, <clears throat> there's lots of options. My uh, particular advice, it, I mean, it, it all depends on your budget. I think the best bang for the buck for octave mandolins right now is the Eastman MDO 305. Uh, it's an A style. You can usually find them around $700 used. Um, 
And when people often ask me, like, oh, I want to get an octave mandolin or a mandola, and I never can really, um, and I, that people can't decide which to get. This is a tenor guitar, but it would just be this with eight strings instead of four. An octave below a mandolin. What I always say is get an octave mandolin, and then if you want a mandola, just get a capo, put it on the fifth fret, and you have a mandola. Now, mandolas on their own right are great, um, but this is a great way if you're not sure which to get. I always suggest people get the octave mandolin because then also you can play all the tunes that you know on a mandolin. And I just I just made a, a lesson on this last week, or this week I guess because it's only Saturday, of you know how to navigate a new instrument like an octave mandolin. Um, because the the fingering is different. You got a different stretch and using different fingers. You end up using your pinky on the fifth fret a lot. Um, so that's, but once you get used to that, if you have an octave mandolin, all your tunes come out in the same key. Whereas if you have a mandola and I try to play that, uh, red haired boy in A, it's in D, which is a little, it, it makes it a little harder to play along with other people if you're playing just sort of the exact fingering on the exact strings on a mandola. You need, the mandola becomes sort of what I think of as like a transposing instrument in the same way if anyone plays trumpet. Um, you know, you, you play what you think of as C, but it comes out in B flat. You're sort of the same idea with a mandola. If you play what, what you know from mandolin, note for note, string for string, fret for fret, it, your tunes come out in a different key, which mandolin and fiddle players aren't gonna be able to play along with. Um, so you get that lower octave, and you can, with a mandola, um, you can, like, relearn a tune. So you kind of go backward and say, okay, if I play this in A, then that's going to come out in D. So what do I need to play this tune in to have it come out in A? Oh, I guess that would be E. And that becomes a little awkward. And then you say, okay, it doesn't really work up there. I'll try it down here. <laughs> That's a bit of a brain workout. Um, but yeah, so I often recommend people, if they're unsure, get an octave mandolin. And if you want to try that mandola tuning, get a capo and put it on the fifth fret. And you get all these other frets too. It's a really great way to... Um, get different keys and allow yourself to still have a bunch of open strings. So capo on the third fret, and I pretend I'm playing in the key of D. Um, becomes F. Um, and so it's great for playing along with singers, you know, because the singer's going to have their own range. And then they say, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna do this one in F sharp, which is kind of an awkward key for people who usually just play tunes. Um, so having an F sharp say, okay, well, fourth fret and pretend I'm playing in D and it's going to come out in F sharp, get to use all those nice open ringing chords. And, and it all works out without having to play a bunch of closed chord shapes. Hope that's helpful on the mandolin family instrument hunt. Ooh, I don't know the words. Um, to Red Haired Boy dash Little Beggar Man. How about a song in G and C? Well, we sort of did. That Red Haired Boy C in it. Um, but if I can think of something, it's hard for me to sort of think in terms of keys. But if I can, I'll, I'll pull something out of my brain if I can. Steven says, greetings from the UK. Can you play something for us in slide timing? I find it hard to count 1 to 12. Have you got any tips on a better way to keep time? Absolutely. 
So, slides are a type of Irish dance and tune. And rather, and it's a little, um, you know, they're technically, if you read the notation for them, they're written out in 12-8. So technically they're written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, no, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Which is just a mouthful and it's a lot to keep in your brain. So I think of, I just sort of distill that idea down into sort of groups of four threes. Um, what's a good slide? So it's jig picking. You're going to have that down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. And slides will often have a rhythm where they're less notey. There's lots of space in this tune. So even though it's 12-8 and it's clipping right along, it really, there's still some space to breathe. And there will be tunes where you have, um, like if you go, like you can have little runs of all 12 and that becomes kind of fast. But generally slides are played at a quick tempo but have enough space that they're sort of manageable to play. So it's jig picking, and I think of it as little groups. It's almost, you can think of it as in groups or not. I would say listen to a bunch of slides, find a bunch of slides on the session or um, those great cultist recordings. I don't know how to say it, Fin Session, Fon Session, um, F-I-O-N-N, S-E-S-I-U-N. Um, great recordings. You can just look that up on YouTube and it's a bunch of really standard classic repertoire Irish tunes that are great to hear and play along with. I've been doing that a lot on the accordion lately and you can slow them down on YouTube so I've been playing along at 50 or 75 percent speed. Um, but slides, they often have this sort of bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum feel them dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum da dum sort of a feel dum di dum di dum di dum di dum di dum all right let's see hope that's helpful there i would say you know yeah really getting that pig uh, pig <laughs> jig picking down down up down down up down down up down down up down is really going to help you and then listen to a bunch of slides and the more you learn the more that that kind of sound will get into your head in the same way that a reel does or a jig or a polka all right, I was trying to catch up with the chat. Love to see it cruising along faster than I can keep up with. Slim Biggin says, thanks for the content. Just switched from the guitar and you've been super helpful. Awesome. So glad to hear that. I'm glad you're uh, enjoying the mandolin. Oh. Yeah, a lot of the, in like kind of, at least... I, I could have just sort of invented that little opening. I'm, I'm reading Shannon's mes message about uh, the opening phrase to to Red Haired Boy. Uh, and so I, I play it, and I may have just invented this, but... 
But I think that's fairly classic in sort of like the bluegrass world. But Shannon's saying that it's more uh, standard in Irish to do. Which makes sense. That does definitely sound a little more Irish to my ear. Cool. Don Doolin. Don. I can't speak today. Don Julen does an interesting version of Red Haired Boy on his CD. My friend Louise and I play Red Haired Boy for everyone at our Christmas Day lunch. Awesome. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it's always good to play music together. That's what it's all about. Don Julen and Tim Connell. I have not checked that record out yet. I should. Wow, thank you so much, Joe, for the super chat. <laughs> it says former, trump former trumpet player. Awesome. So you know how to transpose. You are... Uh, you were just ready for, I'm actually, uh, you are ready for the, the Mandola Revolution. So, just to really go down that rabbit hole for a while. And Shannon, if you're still here, I think Matt needs one of these. Uh, so I just got this instrument from a friend, Owen Marshall, if any of you are familiar with him. And this is a Mandola-tuned bazooki, so it's got a really short scale, and rather, being, rather than being G-D-A-D, it's C-G-D-G. because if there's a guitar player in the group you know usually there's like one accompanist maybe a guitar and a bazooki um in an irish session um and then after that it's mostly just melody players uh and if, I, if there's someone playing the guitar the way that i end up playing bazooki a lot of the time is just to like capo to the fifth fret on a bazooki and never play lower than there so this instrument is a bazooki starting with the capo at the fifth fret, kind of mandola instead of octave mandolin equivalent. And I just played a whole evening of music backing up a great singer out here, uh, Brian O'Hert, and with a guitar player, Na Nancy Conescu, if any of you are in the, the Irish scene. And she plays amazing dadgad guitar, and because she has the lower register of that awesome low dadgad tuning, I, don't th I, I spent most of the night capo 5 on this thing, so it's, what would that be, F, C, G, C, and it's very high pitched, but it really kind of helps get out of the way of the other accompanying instrument. that's actually just a whole step below a mandolin so if I go up to the seventh fret then I'm in mandolin tuning and you can play a lot of tunes it's still got a D on top so the D string gets a little interesting to get used to but that's what practice is for but so yeah this is a fun thing um, for anyone who spends a lot of time playing bazooki with a guitar player <laughs> Or you can just, if you play bazooki, just put a capo on the fifth fret. That's the, the logical way to do it. Um, so, so, oh, but anyway, yeah. So, Joe is saying from a former trumpet player. So my issue with this instrument is I have no idea how to transpose on it yet because I'm I'm so used to transposing from G D A E or G D A D that like I I somebody says like this next one's in D and I'm like I have no idea where to put the capo and then the tune starts and I'm in the wrong spot and it's like oh. I can't deal. So that's what I'm currently working on in terms of transposition. All right, let's catch up here. Drop the E to D on an octave main. Oh, awesome, yep. So RYC beat me to the punch talking about G-Dad, my favorite tuning. Can you recommend, this is from Slim Pickens, can you recommend some mandolin players to listen to besides the obvious one like Sam Bush and Thiele? Yeah, sure. Um, so let's see um in sort of that bluegrass world and a little farther out andy statman is one of my favorites um oh, luke plum is a great australian mandolin player who played in a scottish band sugar nifty for a long time he has a great album called a splendid notion with the percussionist from sugar nifty um, just a duo album of a bunch of great, some of his own original tunes and some traditional Irish and Scottish tunes. 
um, a splendid notion, Luke Plum, P L U M B. Um, he's awesome. Let's see, I'm gonna, it's hard to come up uh, in like in the Indian classical music world. Yu uh, Srinivas, amazing electric mandolin player. Oh, David Surrett. We were talking about David Surrett earlier. He's got a bunch of great music on guitar and mandolin and mandolin family instruments recorded both as instrumental stuff and with a bunch of bands and some singer-songwriter stuff with his wife. Check that stuff out. Um, yeah. I'll keep thinking on that, but I'll also keep going. What capo do I use? That is a tricky question. I have a bag of capos. Nothing, like, fancy, but, well, it's right, it's right here, actually. So it's just a bunch of old random capos that I've found cheap along the way, and Anytime I get an instrument, it's just sort of like, oh, which one of these is going to fit and have the right tension and stuff? I haven't really found anything that's like, oh, this is my favorite capo. Um, but the search continues. East Tennessee Blues is in the key of C. That's a great tune. Maybe I'll play that a little bit later. What's the name of the instrument? Oh, uh, yes. So that was a tenor guitar. Um, arch top, that arch top four string thing tenor guitar tuned like a an octave below a mandolin so an octave mandolin but instead of in courses just single strings thank you uncle bobby and mando and mando play that's what i was gonna say uh for the super chats really appreciate it oh yeah tim connell another great mandolin player also out here in the pacific northwest Don Doolin, yes. Uh, Sharon Gilchrist, also great. Yeah, this is what we need is people in the chat telling you because I'm just one brain and my brain is not nearly as ready to give a lot of great suggestions as everybody in the chat. So everybody in the chat, put your favorite mandolin player in there and I'll learn something too. Best sounding pickup for the mandolin. Great question from Gerzy. Uh, apologies. Oh, Gerzev. Apologies if I'm saying your name incorrectly. I'm sure I am. Um, pickups. So I prefer... I mean, the simplest thing is just a microphone on a stick, on a stand. Um, you know, a, a microphone is... You, know, you can get them for anywhere from 30 to to $100, and that, that's going to be plenty. Or you can get really high-end if you want, but, you know, this thing's a... What is this? I think this mic was less than a hundred dollars. Um, for having something and that's going to give you the, like the most natural sound. Microphones are always going to sound most like a mandolin, compared to some sort of like piezo or electric pickup. Electric pickups are cool, but they're going to sound like electric guitars. Um, my second favorite, maybe even my first favorite, is a little clip-on mic. So what I do with this. It's got this little gooseneck. This is an Audio-Technica Pro 70. Anytime I talk about gear, I'm not sponsored. I just love this stuff. This thing's like probably 15 years old at this point. I have like four of them. Um, and that's like 100, maybe 150 bucks for this whole setup. And what I do with this is I can just clip. Let me I'll do this. I can just clip this. I'd probably scratch up my mandolin by doing that to the tailpiece, but uh, my instruments are meant to be played. So I put it on like that, and then plug this. It's just got an XLR output, and that gives it a nice natural sound too, and the mic stays with you so you can move around while playing. Um, and then in terms of pickups, I, I haven't heard any piezo pickups that I love on the mandolin. They've come a long way in the last 20 years, um, they sound great on guitar. I love piezo pickups on guitars and larger instruments. Um, so like the, the K and K is the company. So like this bazooki's got one in it. Some of the guitars back there have K and Ks. Those sound great. I've never heard a mandolin with a K and K pickup that really was like, wow, that sounds so natural and amazing to my ears. So I much prefer, unless you're playing in like a really big band with a bunch of horns and drums where it might feed back that mic. Um, or really kind of heavy monitoring situation where you have speakers pointed right at you that's going to also kind of interfere with your ability just to have a mic but the mic is always going to sound the most like a mandolin oh Sierra Ho another amazing mandolin player 
Uh, what's my most Irishy reel on tenor banjo? Well, I'll play you. I'll play you. I don't know. What is my most Irishy reel? Whew. I don't know. I just play a lot of Irish tunes. Um. Oh, here's a cool tune. Uh, is that gonna work? On... But here's a very interesting Irish tune called Bear Island. No. But yeah, Bear Island, real? Yeah, it's a Finbar Dwyer tune who was an amazing button accordion player. <laughs> Shannon, if you're still here and can play this tune, I would love to figure out how to play this on uh, on button box, but those G sharps, like I was saying earlier, this tune, so this tune's interesting because it's mostly an E minor, but it starts with a big E major arpeggio. Let's see here. reels so that first one bear island and then the second one is miss thornton's in g major oh yeah marla fibish fibish is an amazing mandolin player who i have not met in person but co-taught with at david surratt's mandolin camp during the pandemic hope to actually get to play some tunes with marla at some point and keith murphy an excellent mandolin and guitar player in vermont Thank you for those suggestions, Shannon. And yeah, anybody who's into Irish music, go subscribe to Shannon Heaton's channel. I know a bunch of you already have. And uh, they do live <laughs> guided sessions every other week, or first and third Saturdays right after my live stream. My live stream, by the way, is 10 minutes from finishing, so i got to do a little lightning round here with the chat. Uh, oh, partial capos. I've never messed around with partial capos, but maybe somebody else has. Ooh, KZO Ishibashi. I don't know how to say that first name, but uh, <laughs> a bag of capos. <laughs> Somebody's got to write the tune in the bag of capos. There's a, there's a tune called the bag of spuds. Uh, so it's probably a bag of something else too, but... Uh, Bag of Capos needs to be a tune. 
I got all right. So I got to look up that Ishibashi person and check that out. Very cool. Techno question: How important is a radius fretboard for playability? I personally do not care. Um, I have instruments with my Ellis mandolins are radius. This mandolin, which I got recently, is an old Lion and Healy um, style C from the teens, and it's got a flat fretboard. care it can take a little bit of a uh... oh huh I don't know how that how do I get that to go away Ooh, huh. I didn't notice that comment somehow got stuck in the upper corner um yeah it, it can take a little getting used to every new instrument's gonna play a little bit different I I know there are some people who really care and really feel a lot more comfortable on one or the other I'm not one of those people um but you know just if you ever have the opportunity to play radius boards versus flat boards next to each other you can make that decision for yourself i think for me it's more of a question of like neck shape and scale length and things like that and but it, like even this one this neck shape's very different it's a little kind of chunkier than my ellis a little deeper and the scale length is like an inch shorter on this instrument um but yeah, you just kind of get used to them. And this is my experience. Tim O'Brien, David Dog Grisman, all great ideas. Caleb Clauder, yes. Amazing mandolin player, one of my favorites here in the Pacific Northwest. Alan Bybee for Bluegrass. Any feedback issues on these clip-on microphones? Not, again, not unless I... Uh, not unless it's a really loud environment, but because they're so close to the instrument, you know, they're, they're sitting right, right here. Like, you know, the, the microphone that I'm recording with right now, I don't know if I can get that into the shot is, you know, two feet away. It's a, it's meant to be out of the screen. So it's called a shotgun mic, but, um, you know, in a studio environment, you can be further away and get away with it. Um, but you know, the, when the mic's on the mandolin, it's sitting really close. So it, you don't need to really crank up the gain too much on the mic. So unless you're playing again with drums or horns or in a really loud environment where you need a lot of monitors facing back at you, 99% of the time microphone works best for me on mandolins. I would love to find, uh, uh, um, I love the ability when I'm playing guitar or bazooki to just, you know, plug in, get rid of that whole feedback thing. It's still not like, 100% as natural as a clip-on microphone. I used clip-on microphones for a long time on guitars and bazookies. Um, but they're a little, I think because the mandolin's small, it just, it, it's a little more consistent. And I would find that there would often be like hot or cold spots miking a guitar with a clip-on mic. It's still very natural. It was just not quite what I was after. Uh, anyway, David Benedict. Sarah Jeruz, Sierra Hull, all great folks. Nardellis, apologies if I'm not saying your name correctly. Welcome. Sierra Hull, Adam Steffi, Bear Island is cool on banjo. I agree. Ooh, MK Boone did a wonderful piece by Duke Ellington on mandolin. If you want to find, okay, here's the thing. If you want to find new mandolin players, Go subscribe to David Benedict's channel and watch all of his Mandolin Mondays. He's had hundreds of mandolin players on at this point. All really amazing ones from people I've never heard of to some of the biggest in the in the game. Tristan Scroggins as well. Andrew Marlin, Tim O'Brien, all great. Andrew Marlin is amazing. I'm really excited for Andrew Marlin's new project with Noam Pakelny and Critter Eldridge and Alex Hargraves. And the bass player, Greg Garrison. Um, they have a, a new group called Mighty Poplar, which they're about to put out a new record. The, the tracks I've heard have been amazing. Banjo is tuned GDAE, yep. Am I using a thinner pick when playing Irish banjo? Yes. So with a mandolin, I'm using this 1.5 millimeter 
uh, kind of big triangle. And with banjo, I'm using this thin, the 0.88 nylon Jim Dun Dunlop, um, which makes it feel more like a 0.7 or 0.6 um, sort of regular pick, but the nylon material is just a little more bendy than others. Uh, Peter says, do you find that the hazy banjo head is better for muting the tone versus a clear head? Um, I think playing around with different head materials is really a personal preference. I've I, I, I really like those Renaissance heads on tenor banjo. They're snappy, um, but they've still got like a certain warmth to them. Um, I really like clear heads. I've got a banjo in Maine with a clear head on it that I love. I've got some tenor, I've got one tenor banjo with a skin head, which makes it much darker sounding, um, but it's a cool sound. So really, you know, try it. It's a, you know, a lot of heads are 30 bucks or less, and you can just do a little experimentating, experimentating, experimenting, and see what, see what you like the sound of, or watch some YouTube videos. But I, I think it's really mostly just um, personal preference. Noah Fishman, yes. Thank you, Dave, for the super chat. Really appreciate it. Thanks all what you do to the for the community. Well, thanks for being part of the community. Mike on a stand. Step up and step back as needed. Yep, I really like that. Elisa Meyer is amazing. Yeah, from Brazil. Cool. Glad everybody's enjoying the music. Jake Howard, also amazing. Thank you so much, Joy, for... Uh, <laughs> I love it. So I, in my program, I can't see... Um, these like fancy emojis so it says joy super chat or super sticker and then it says the words sunglasses perpetually fall onto a video game controller's proud face <laughs> Which, i love the like text description of fancy emojis any rules for planting the pinky on your left hand i would say the rule is don't do it that's my hot take anyway um i think it just adds a lot of tension to the instrument or to your playing that said, there are people who do plant and make it work, but I always, I used to plant and it just really messed up my technique. Um, so if at all possible, you're nice, relaxed, no planting, floating hand is the best. Oh, nice. Marla will be at the Mando camp along with Skip Gorman, Keith Murphy, and Steve Roy, all great mandolin players. Uh, what do you think of a skinhead on a tenor banjo? It's, it's cool. It's, it's definitely dark. It's not the classic really bright, almost harsh tenor banjo sound, but it's cool. It's, it's uh, very mellow in a nice way. I don't think I would have only, if I only had one tenor banjo, like a normal person, <laughs> uh, I would probably just have one with a Renaissance kind of frosted head like that when I was just playing. Okay, we are going to now, I think I've finally caught up with the chat. Thank you all for keeping the party rolling. Let's play a little old Joe Clark and then pick a tune for next week. Uh, am I going to be here next week? And then, oh, I will not be here next week. It's St. Patty's weekend. I got a bunch of gigs. Um, but the weekend after that, we'll uh, do it again. Woo, that was my tuner. Um, so a little old Joe Clark. We'll play it not too fast. I'll pass it. We can pass it back and forth. I'll play the melody. You play the chords. I'll play the chords. You play the melody. Here we go. Let's do it one more time in G and then up to A. So once through in G as a little um, review and then up to A. So one, two, G. You can just play chords or melody. Clark is not red haired boy. I was like, something isn't adding up. All right, right old Joe Clark, straight ahead, key of A, mix. <laughs> Woo, yeah, the old live stream brain really gets me sometimes. 
Here we go. the end there thank you all so much for tuning in sorry i ran a little late today but we're all having fun and i love to see the chat just keep on trucking so let's get a tune for next or two weeks from now put out your favorites and we'll have some fun with it i'm gonna look at my handy dandy little list here so we can make sure we pick one we didn't just do. No, also look here. We could do coolies reel. We could do country gardens. Hmm, I do love country gardens. Have never done that one, and that's a tune everybody should know. Maybe I'll just call it. Let's do country gardens. It's a great tune. Sounds like this.
<laughs> so if you're looking for some really high quality entertainment, look up, is it Muppets or is it Sesame Street? I think it's, I want to say it's the Muppets. The Muppets Country Gardens. Uh, and it's, it's a good one. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, we did, we did Danny Boy not long ago, just a couple of episodes ago, and we did Red Haired Boy. Episode 40 and on the website. So let's do when we haven't done it all, let's do Country Gardens. Uh, look up that Muppets for a little entertainment. It's one of my favorite videos of all time. One of the highlights of all of YouTube is Country Gardens, the Muppets. All right, thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a good weekend. Don't put the mandolin down just because uh, this live stream's over. And uh, keep on picking. Bye-bye.